Good evening. This is Orson Welles introducing this festival of great films of the silent years and bringing you this time a marvelous example of one kind of film, kind I always loved, starring a personality who was my hero when I was a kid. A lot of us felt that way about him. I know Laurence Olivier grew up as I did, idolizing Douglas Fairbanks Sr. There was never anybody in his league as far as we were concerned. Nobody could swashbuckle like Doug Sr. I think even Douglas Fairbanks Jr., who is uh, incidentally a more beautiful man even now in his uh, distinguished middle years than his father ever was, I think he'd, he'd admit that his father, Sr., had something that nobody ever equaled. A kind of charm, a kind of dash, a sort of uh, innocent arrogance that has never been seen since on the screen. Douglas Fairbanks, senior, was a star on the stage in Broadway, but always in acrobatic light comedy and farce. Here in a picture called Wild and Woolly, Doug is playing the spoiled junior executive who is a Wild West buff. He keeps his wigwam and saddle in the office. And he rides the great open spaces of Central Park. inevitably he draws the office assignment of nailing down a contract in a western shoot 'em up town where he shows the hard-bitten cowboys that the eastern playboy is tougher than all of them. Now, Doug took one step toward the swash and the buckle of the mark of Zorro in tackling the assignment of quelling a revolution in a banana republic dictatorship. Again, he's still the junior executive sent out from New York and not yet the fully freewheeling romantic adventurer. Fairbanks, senior, was a friend of my father's. He was also a friend of mine. He didn't know that, but <laughs> I knew it and I knew him. And what a thrill the occasional glimpse was. I remember my father telling me, in fact showing me, the place where Doug had jumped from a balcony over some stairs and into the lobby of the old Imperial Hotel in Tokyo in some moment of uh, 
of flamboyant high spirits, of the sort that uh, he was to make famous in films, in the, in the costume swashbucklers that bore his name. But they came later in his career. The Mark of Zorro began as a sort of offbeat experiment. It had another title at first, uh, The Curse of Capistrano, according to my notes. Anyway, to his surprise, and the surprise of that great director who made it, Fred Niblo, uh, it turned out to be a big critical success and a great commercial smash. Of course, there were a million imitations, but here's the first and the inimitable Mark of Zorro. <laughs> 